They say that Gita and Mahabharat can give answers to all your life's questions. But there's one question posed by the tale itself that perplexes us all. Why did Yudhishthir keep on betting in the game of dice? He lost his kingdom but didn't stop. He lost his brothers but didn't stop. He even lost himself and his wife. Why did he still not stop? Turns out Shakuni Mama wasn't just a master of deceit but also a master of psychology. He knew what gambling would do to Yudhishthir's mind. Whether it's a game of blackjack or trading in the stock markets, if you don't do the math, a gamble is a gamble. It can change lives for better or for worse, though usually it's the latter. So, why does this happen? Read on. Welcome back to Revolution Read On, a daily podcast where we break down one story from the world of business and finance. Gambling and addiction go hand in hand, and like with all cliched addicts, the go-to phrase here is I can stop whenever I want, except we almost never can. The inability of a gambler to stop, think, rationalize and logically follow when to bet and when to get out is related to a concept called the gambler's conceit now two situations can arise here the first is when people are running in losses the second when they are booking profits no matter how far along or far behind you are in the game you will be ruined how if you're incurring losses gambler's conceit plays out through another psychological delusion the sunk cost fallacy after all if you've lost money won't you be tempted to do something to recover it perhaps continue betting but in an attempt to recover the sunk cost you keep on putting in more and more money ultimately losing it all our beloved yudhishthir also fell into this exact trap Now gambler's conceit and sunk cost fallacy don't come alone they bring one more friend along gambler's fallacy you know how we have this notion that every night has a morning or a set of bad episodes has to be followed by good ones while this optimism keeps us going it becomes our undoing while gambling gambler's fallacy tricks us into thinking that a losing streak in a game of chance has to come to an end it tricks us into thinking that there's a pattern but in reality there is none every event is independent but our romanticism doesn't stop until we lose our entire life savings now let's consider a situation where you're winning in this case you have no incentive to stop once in the throes of a winning streak we are easily convinced that it's our skill or good luck that's on our side once taken over by greed we don't know where to stop but sooner or later the luck runs out and in the process of recovery we too end up losing it all what's all the more interesting is that gambler's conceit isn't a fallacy for gamblers alone it plays out in the markets too isn't the dilemma that we face while buying or selling a stock an example of gambler's conceit If I hold on to this stock a bit longer maybe then I'll be able to recover the lost amount people chase money all the time but sometimes money isn't it sometimes we fall prey to something far bigger than these fallacies something that is responsible for humanity's biggest achievements as well as their steepest downfalls dopamine This tiny molecule in our brain makes us chase thrills and adventure. It's not the win that drives us, instead it's the anticipation of the win that makes us a compulsive gambler. And understanding this has become even more important in today's times with the rise of real money games. These games give you massive dopamine hits to get you hooked, which could lead to massive losses and a gambling addiction. Either way, identifying these behaviors and psychological fallacies and rectifying them can save us a lot of money and anxiety. The key to any bet or trade should be calculative. Emotions should not overpower our judgment and reason. So, keep calm, play smart, and thank you for listening to this episode. We'll be back with more tomorrow. Until then, read on.